where did she did she fall asleep in her bedroom? She came and got up on the couch with me. Mm -hmm. On April 5th, 2018, emergency workers responded to a call made by Jenea Pratt. On arrival, her 18-month-old daughter, Charlotte Napper-Talley, was cold and not breathing. An hour later, the child was pronounced dead. An autopsy later showed that she had ingested fentanyl, and two blood tests confirmed a large overdose. Two sippy cups were recovered from the scene, and one tested positive for traces of fentanyl. You guys took a nap? We barely, we barely fell asleep. By the time I was actually, you know, like dozing mm -hmm. off, Miss Vernon was knocking at the door. Okay, and at that time you put her in her bedroom or left her on the couch? At this time, I had picked her up because she was laying with me on the couch. I'm not sure if she was on top of me or beside me at that point. Yeah. Um, I picked her up and I laid her on the couch okay. and I opened the door and I came to get her off the couch and I put her in her bed. Okay. Listening to Pratt describe the events of the day, one would not think this was a woman who just lost her daughter in a horrific manner. Her voice is steady and there are no tears. She doesn't even show signs of being in shock which would at least explain her lack of emotion. Um, did you, did she eat or drink anything? My boyfriend told me he made fish sticks mm -hmm. and I want to say like french fries or something. Okay. No, I'm that was earlier in the day when you guys got back. Did mm -hmm. she eat or drink anything? No, she didn't eat or drink anything. Okay. She had left her, he said she she didn't want her sippy cup before they walked out the door to come and get me. So he left the sippy cup there. Which when sippy got, cup was that? To my knowledge, it should have been the pink one. The pink sippy cup? Mm -hmm. And where was that located? I'm not even sure, I wasn't there. Here, it sounds like she is setting up her boyfriend to take the blame. At the very least, he will have to be questioned to determine whether or not he was an accomplice. Did he have that or did she have it? It was left. It was left there? She didn't want it on the way out the door. Okay, when you say on the way out the door, you mean? When they left to come to and get come, me from okay. school. Okay, when you came back, did she, that pink sippy cup, do you remember I where it was? I didn't even see the sippy cup. Did you give her the sippy, sippy cup at all? I didn't see the sippy cup. Okay. Do you remember it being in her, in her bedroom, that sippy cup? I think I might have found the sippy cup on the way to, I don't, I'm not sure. I just remember, I believe, putting the sippy cup in her bed with her. Okay. Did you put anything in the sippy cup? No, there was a red liquid in it, and I know we had huggies. Yeah, I remember time. seeing some huggies in there. To, my, to be more specific, happy drink huggies. Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you, when you were living, let me, I'm just going to show you the, the picture. This is. Um, Is this the same sippy cup you're thinking of? Mm -hmm. Now, did you have put liquid in there um, earlier in the day? Yes. You did? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was that the same sippy cup that you put the liquid in? Was it was before you went to school, when you got home from school, or? I put a, a different juice drink in there, and she had a complete fit, and she didn't drink it. Okay. So, how the red liquid got in, he changed her sippy cup when he fed her. Okay. He said she drank a little bit and threw it. Okay. Out of that sippy cup? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, when you lived at that address, um, did you get anything delivered in the mail from overseas? I had just ordered her entire room from Walmart. I don't know mm -hmm. if that came from overseas or not. Well, Walmart won it. I'm saying, like, did you order anything that maybe that you know, might not have, that might have been out of the ordinary 
any type of... The detective is questioning her about any recent purchases that might have come from overseas. This is to track down the source of fentanyl, which, at least at the time of this crime, could be relatively easy to obtain from China. Anything from a different country? No, my mother purchased the baby gate that was in her room. Okay. I believe she purchased that from Walmart also. Okay. There would be no reason like you would get any packages, say, from China or from Japan or anything like that? Like directly from them? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. But to your knowledge, you... I ordered everything from Walmart. Okay. okay. Um, so just to be clear, the, the, the stuff that was in that sippy cup, you, you did put in or you did not? I did not. Okay. Okay. Do you have any idea... Um, well, let me, I'm just gonna cut, I'm just gonna be blunt to you. Your child died from fentanyl poisoning. So why did CYF tell me hypoxic cardiac arrest? They were, there weren't lab results then. So I'm gonna explain this to you, okay? In that sippy cup was fentanyl in her blood was fentanyl when they, we just got these results back. It's the same type of fentanyl that people are overdosing every day in Pittsburgh and dying from. Same exact type. Okay. So I need to know how the fentanyl got in the sippy cup. Because right now it's not an accident. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so scientifically, it's impossible for your daughter to put fentanyl in a sippy cup, okay? Physically, it's impossible for her to. Scientifically, that's another story, but right now, that's, what, that's how she died. Again, she shows no real concern over the death of her daughter. The detective points out that there is no way this is an accident. While it is true that it is possible for a child to ingest something like this that they found around the house if a family member is using drugs, placing it in the sippy cup is a very deliberate act. It wasn't a heart attack. It wasn't any other reason other than she overdosed on fentanyl, which is the same fentanyl that people in the streets are dying on every single day. How the fentanyl get in the sippy cup, Janine? Just straight fentanyl? Yeah. So what is it, like a liquid? A, a, a I'm not a scientist. It comes in a liquid form. It comes in a powder form. I, I'm not exactly sure. But what I am sure of is that that fentanyl was put in a sippy cup, and there was liquid mixed into it, and it was given to Charlotte, and that's how she died. So I need to know how that got in there. I have no knowledge to how fentanyl got in my daughter's sippy cup. Okay. Pratt keeps her arms crossed, a sign of defensiveness and concealment. There is a limit of two people who could have poisoned her daughter and only three scenarios. One, her boyfriend did it and she is protecting him. Or the second scenario, she killed her daughter and is framing her boyfriend. And the final possibility is that they were in on this together. In any of these alternatives, it is virtually impossible that she has no knowledge or at the very least, some suspicion about what happened. Because you realize right now this investigation is taking a whole different turn. Yeah, clearly. And the, when someone gives someone something and they die from it, it's a homicide. She was poisoned intentionally. Okay, well, okay. I've been making complaints to my rent office because I've been smelling a funny smell in my house uh, several times returning back to my house. This is since you've moved or? No, this is living in apartment number five. This is where you used to live? Yes. Saying. Okay. Well, that still wouldn't explain how it got in the sippy cup. Well, I'm just as clueless as you are. 
So are you implicating that I put fentanyl in my child's sippy cup? No. I, I, but based on this timeline, I mean, there's only two people that could have put fentanyl in the sippy cup. Based on what you just told me about 10 minutes ago. And based on the whole timeline of that day. I need to know how it got in there. Because this, this investigation is not going away. Okay, and I'm telling you, I returned to my house from being picked up from school, mm -hmm. and I did nothing out of the usual. Okay. We took our stuff off, and she ran around and played, and I'm waiting for my social worker to come. Okay. Do you get fentanyl delivered from China? I have, I know, I don't know anything about fentanyl. Okay. Did you ever put anything in her sippy cup other than no. huggy juice? She's drank water. She's drank milk. She's drank Kool-Aid liquids. But have you ever put anything in there? No, I have not. Okay. Other than... I mean, because some parents will give their kids a little bit of, you know, Benadryl or something like that. So like, no, that doesn't go in a sippy cup because it's supposed to be measured out. And Benadryl's not supposed to be drank. Tylenol's not supposed to be drank over a specific amount of hours. It's supposed to be one dose and that's it. Right, I agree with you. I agree with you. But people, parents... I'm not one of those people okay. or parents. Okay, that's what I'm asking. She is growing more agitated but seems to be more upset about being accused than finding out what happened to her daughter. Obviously, any innocent person would protest at being accused of something like this, but it's almost impossible to imagine that a parent wouldn't be desperately trying to figure out what had happened, or if there was any way that someone else could have had access to the cup. And it, it wouldn't be the first time, okay? I'm just asking. But the problem, we have a problem right now. Would you... Is that safe to say that there's a problem? I mean, I have, I have, I have to figure out how this got in there, because your baby is can't tell me. Is there a reason someone would want to do that? With some, is there a reason why fentanyl would be in a sippy cup? No, there's not, and no, there's not a reason anybody would want to. The amount of fentanyl that was in her system was extremely high. Okay, it was it, it was very high, and that's essentially when she drank the sippy cup. Whenever she picked that sippy cup off the bed, it was absorbed very quickly, and once she swallowed it, she didn't have much time to survive. That's not possible because. I didn't physically see her with her sippy cup, and we were at home. I was with her. I can't tell you the exact time frame, but when I got home, because mm -hmm. I went to the welfare office a little bit after, I, as soon as I left school, there's no possible way. Although Pratt protests that there is no way this could have happened the way he says, she offers no other possible alternative and there is no evidence it could have happened any other way. The detective is visibly struggling to keep his emotions in check, understandably so because handling the case of a child's death like this is enough to break anyone down. Well, the sippy cup I showed you that picture of, that's the sippy cup that had it in it. I'm going to step out for a little bit and let you think about this. There's nothing to think about. Okay, well, I need to step out anyway. All right. But I, that's why I brought you here was to tell you exactly what happened and what we found. And, I mean, it wasn't really me, but it was, you know, scientists and, you know, people at the lab that discovered all this, medical examiners, doctors. Okay, so am I under arrest? No. Are there any more questions? I just want to know how it got in there. That's, that's the big question. I don't know how it got in there. 
this is news to me like it's news to you. If you had to guess how it got in there, is there any way, you know, any guess you could have? A manufacturing issue with the happy drinks. So you think it could have been the, the huggy? Yes, and as a matter of fact, I took a sip of those huggies and I actually, it didn't really have a, a pleasing taste to it. We tested the huggies. Mm. No fentanyl. So what are you implying? She has underestimated them because they have already tested the drink. This is done in the case of any poison, any known ingested food or beverage, as well as anything open in cases when it isn't known where the person consumed, is tested for any trace of poison. This helps determine if the poisoning was deliberate or if there needs to be an immediate product recall for public safety. I'm, 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 I'm asking, I'm just asking straight up how it got in there. And I'm telling you straight up, I have no clue how it got in there. No clue. Is this something your boyfriend would have done? He has kids of his own, why would he hurt my child? Oh, well there's, I mean there's, did anyone else have access to the apartment? Maintenance people, the people who run the place. So other than the maintenance people and people that run the place, the only person that has access to it is you and um, Mr. Williams. Yes. Was any maintenance people in there recently? I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? Does anyone, was anyone in your house that uses heroin? I wouldn't know what people's personal drugs they but use. But to your knowledge? No. Did you have any people in your house that use heroin? No. Do you use heroin? No. Does your boyfriend use heroin? No. Other than smoking weed, do you do any other drugs? No. It's my job to find out how this got in there, okay, at this point. And the, like, right, this isn't going to go away. This investigation is not going away until I find out. Okay. When you find out, you let me know. I definitely will. I Any definitely will. Any further questions? Um, I mean, you already told me she was acting fine. She was, she wasn't sick. You guys got home, you take a nap. You fall asleep together on the couch. Social or the urban league lady comes, you take her into her bedroom. She falls asleep in there, urban lady leaves. She was asleep before I put oh, her Oh, she was still bed. asleep. Mm -hmm. She stayed asleep, urban lady left. And you went to check on her and that's when you found she was unresponsive. And there was the pink sippy cup on her bed. And you called 911. Police showed up first, and then the medics, correct? I don't know who showed up first, honestly. Okay. I just, I really want to know why your baby had that large amount of fentanyl. I mean, it was enough to kill a very large animal. There's no way my daughter could have got into any type of fentanyl. I agree with you. I agree. I think someone, just like a bartender, mixes up a drink, put it in that sippy cup. That's the only possible where it could have got in there. Is there any more questions, officer, detective? Do you agree with me? I'm not agreeing because I, um, who would do that to a child? That's, I, I, There's I, re no I really, really, really messed up person, been. really messed up person would do that. There's no possible way. Well, 
got in there somehow. And the amount of fentanyl she had could have killed probably two horses. With a dose this high, there is no way the toddler had any chance of survival. Pratt Cagely makes sure not to agree that it had to be deliberate because she knows that doing so could possibly be taken as an admission of guilt. That was in her system. Okay. Any more questions? No. Am I under arrest? No. Can I go? Sure. Pratt presses the detective to see if she is under arrest, and when she is told she is free to go, she immediately leaves, still showing no concern for her daughter. On June 4th, 2019, even though the jury had the option to choose first-degree murder, Pratt was convicted of involuntary manslaughter and will only face a maximum of 10 years for the death of her daughter. Based on the evidence, it is difficult to see how they came to that decision. It is even more difficult to contemplate that such a light sentencing might not deter her from similar crimes once she is released.